Hi, this is David Papkin with TSI Consulting Services, and in this series on Windows Server 2016 about cloning a domain controller. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare a source domain to be cloned. So in this one I'm going to have to do is on some groups, I'm going to have to add a little bit here. So I'm going to use the AD Administrative Center, which was new in 2012 R2. And I'm going to do is add this one to allow it to be con uh, cloned. Under Domain Controllers, see London DC1, I'm going to add it to a group. So in this one right here, clonable, and I'm going to do check name over here. Click OK. Good. Then I'm going to do is run a command on here. So on this one right here is I'm going to find out if there's any services or anything that can't that are, that shouldn't be allowed on this one that'll prevent it from being cloned on this one. Now, if there's any of them here, I'll have to exclude them. Afterwards, the next thing I'm going to do is just generate this XML file. Great, so it's written to this uh, custom DC clone allow list.xml. Now, um, it made sure that it's a member of the clonable domain controllers group. Remember, I just added that to there with the AD Admin Center. The validation checks passed. Fantastic. So then I'm going to stop the computer, shut it down. Then I can do my uh, export next. So the next I'm going to do is export the source virtual machine. Let me just take this right here and go export. The location where I'm going to put them all there. So whatever the folder is, like for example, backup, it'll create a folder with the name of, uh, of that VM in there. Something to notice also when you do the export, it actually merges disks. So if you do as you have um, on this one base disk, differential disk, that are in different folders, you don't have to worry about that. This folder that we put it in into the export, it's going to do is merge them all into there so that folder will be complete. That's why it takes a little bit of time. Now I'm going to go import virtual machine. I'm going to pick that one that I exported. And to back up, pick that one, London DC1, select it. Next, next. Now I could do is use the same one or copy the one. If I don't do this one, if I pick register the first choice, I can only import it one time, apparently. This one will create a new unique ID, but it does take longer. I could put them in a different location, the files. Where I'm going to put them, where to put the checkpoints, etc. So then it's copying the um, IDs, whatever. So now you can see they have this one here. I'm just going to do a rename on it. Just for the simple point. Now this is just the name in Hyper-V. I'm going to call this one London DC3. On this, any settings I want to change on this. Take a look in here. So 
and I'm going to start it up. So notice this time when I booted it up, it says domain control or cloning. It'll be at the percentage. It's just going to go through. After 100%, I believe it'll reboot another time. Good. I'm going to log on. You'll notice under domain controls, look, now there's another one, DC3. Fantastic, it's all there. Much quicker and easier than like in VMware, cloning a standalone, joining a domain, promoting it to a domain controller. Please note that you shouldn't do more, than best practice, no more than 10 at a time. See, there's the name, London DC3, in the domain or whatever. He is a domain controller. Of course, that's the IP address is a DHCP address, and I can change it to a static, which is recommended. Any server giving services shouldn't have that. Now, I'm going to just do a little test here. I'm going to switch the focus of this tool from DC1 to DC3. See? DC3. It actually works perfectly. So I'm all done. That'll conclude it. We've prepared a domain controller. We've exported it and started it. Thank you very much. This is David Papkins. See you again soon.